we're gonna do the post mount version of this vinyl fence. So what we have here is we have a two and three eighths SS40 steel post, galvanized. They welded a plate to it in the shop. It's a pre-made plate, comes right out of the box. We're gonna use a three eighths strong tie concrete anchor. The plate is so small because we're gonna use a five by five vinyl post and we want the plate to be on the inside of that post. My plate measures four by four and my holes are a half inch. So you could use a half inch concrete anchor or you could use a three eighths. I'm gonna use a three eighths. So when it comes to existing concrete and wanting to install a vinyl fence, how do you do it? Well, you have a couple options. We're gonna show you one. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the post mount method with donuts. But first, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and clear the snow out of here. A tool like this, the uses are endless. I mean, if you had a nice loaf of bread for lunch, you could actually use it to slice your bread. Definitely a great option for scraping the ice off your wife's car. <laughs> One thing to keep in mind, make sure to keep that plate square with the post and not diamond shaped. Because if you have diamond shaped, what's gonna happen is that plate's gonna stick outside of that five by five post. I like your car! So before we can go ahead and drill those holes in the concrete, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on a dust mask. Because why? Anytime you do anything with concrete, when it's dry, in the dry form, in the dust form, you wanna wear some protection such as this, because if not, you can get silica dust up in your lungs and it's just not all good and yeah, it's bad for you. We're gonna wear hearing protection too. These are frozen solid. Let me warm them up, hold on. <laughs> They're like little tiny orange ice cubes and I'm about ready to put them in my ear. One down, one to go. Right now, as we're filming this, I believe we're about like maybe two degrees. A little cold outside. We have both these posts mounted. Uh, on this last post that we have, we have some shims and we have it shimmed level. Just showing you some options of what you can do when you're working on top of concrete. Now these shims, they are not wood shim, composite all the way. Uh, another thing that you can use for a shim is a washer. There again, you're dealing with the same thickness over and over and over, whereas a shim, it starts out really thin and gets wider or thicker. Typically when you're working on top of concrete, you're dealing with such a small surface area, it's gonna be really hard to get that, your object level, so therefore, that's an option for you is to use composite shims underneath your base. One other factor that is very critical, when hammer drilling, make sure to drill all your holes and then fasten your post down after you blow all your dust out. We used a leaf blower to blow the dust out of our holes and away from the location so that that way there's no separator. If you capture some dust in there, what can happen is you're creating a barrier over time it's gonna get loose and you're gonna be able to wiggle that fence and it's, gonna, it's not gonna be good. So make sure that there's nothing between the top of the concrete and the bottom of the base plate. Now on this one, I did not use any shims. And why did I not use any shims? Because we're gonna use donuts on this. They come in a baker's dozen, sprinkles sold separately. This is for a no dig fence method. And if you do not know what I'm talking about and you have not seen the video, that video is right here. We can actually use this as a shim so our post can be crooked and we can still adapt that post to make it level. Okay, so these donuts, I have them set up 90 degrees to each other. The bottom one, the oblong hole is going this way. The top one, the oblong hole is going that way. So it looks, I'm controlling both axes. The top one, we can only move this way. So we know that this is good here. And our, our plum, for us to be plum, 
Our bottom one needs to come over this direction. So we're gonna come this way just a little bit. Okay, this way is great. Now we're gonna go this way. We can't move the bottom one because we can't go this way, back and forth, but we can move our top one. So we're gonna slide our top one over this way until we're level. Plum, plum. So we're level that way, and we are now level that way. So I did, like I said before, I did not shim this post whatsoever. I mounted it to the concrete and away I went. Two screws is plenty. What you're gonna have if you do two, is you're just gonna be able to rock that donut just a little bit. But I'm an overachiever, so I'm gonna put in one more. Just so that way I don't have any rocking in it. So these ones, since the post is level, if I went ahead and measured off the post to the edge of the donut, I could just set them however I want. I don't even have to level them. 12 and a half. I just want to go ahead and match my same height. One inch and an inch. So this donut is centered in the post. Now that we have our vinyl post slid over our metal posts, we're gonna measure from steel post to steel post. We have 50 and a half, so we're gonna cut that rail to 50 and a half because we want that rail to be tight. Those steel posts are gonna lock it in so that, that way it can't come out. We can't get the other side of our rail in, so what we need to be able to do, we're gonna lift off that plate we're going to rotate it to be able to put that rail in that hole and we're going to rotate back. Pop everything in because if you can't rotate those posts, you can't get that bottom rail in. Now that we have that rail in, we don't want the post to rotate anymore. We have one screw going into the bottom donut and one screw going into the top donut. So now this post can't turn. And if you're concerned you didn't hit it, try to rotate your post. Then I cannot, so therefore I know I hit it. So now that we got that in, what we need to do is we need to take a measurement from the post to the edge of the tongue here to figure that out. I know what I need, and I'm gonna go get it cut. Be right back. So the top rail is gonna be different than the bottom rail. Those metal posts stop about right here. So, and there's a reason that, that that we did that. And it's so that the top rail can go all the way into the post, come back out, and then slide into this post. So we want an inch and a half on each side. We're gonna measure from inside a post to inside a post, and we're gonna add three inches. So I have 48 and a half inches. So now we're gonna add the three inches to 48 and a half, 51 and a half inches. So now we got our top rail cut. We're gonna slide it all the way into this post over here. Doing that enables us to, I'm over here now, Hi. slide it back into this post for insertion so that we get an inch and a half on each side. Now we need to go ahead and install our rail lock. It fits perfectly on the inside of the post. We're gonna take another one of our soft tapping screws. We're gonna go through that hole and we're gonna screw it into that top of that rail so that rail can no longer move freely. If I had another rail coming through the post, we would then put a screw in that hole to tie those two rails together and continue that daisy chain all down the fence line. But now this rail, it can't move any direction. Sure, it can expand and contract, but the wind's not gonna blow it out. Another benefit to doing this is you no longer have to notch or crimp the top rail. You can just put it in the rail lock and one screw on each side, and away you go. 
We used a two and three eighths steel galvanized SS40 post in each one of these posts. You can use an inch and seven eighths, and if you choose to do so, if you need an inch and seven eighths donut adapter, I will just forewarn you, this creates a lot of wind resistance and I would highly recommend the two and three eighths, but if you're going to a four foot tall or a five foot tall, or if you just want to do an inch and seven eighths, we do have the adapters. One thing to be very cautious about, do know what kind of concrete you're dealing with. And if it's not a good surface to be bolting to, you should go through it. Ha! <sighs> you know, Nick, I think we do great work. I wish you'd have helped a little bit more, but that's okay. solid like a rock we really hope that you guys enjoyed the video like and subscribe leave us a comment and until next time you have a good dang day